This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law was covered in a previous video. And we saw that the volume occupied by a gas is directly proportional to the amount in moles of gas at constant pressure and temperature. This can be shown as V is directly proportional to N, V over N equals a constant K, or V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. Avogadro's law can also be expressed as the following. At the same temperature and pressure, equal volumes of any gas contain the same number of particles. So this tells us that for any gas, equal volumes at the same temperature and pressure will contain the same number of particles. So next, we look at some examples. In this table, we have the gases oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane. As we can see, one mole of each gas has a volume of 22.7 cubic decimeters under conditions of STP, which is 22.7 cubic decimeters. If we look at the right column, we can see that one mole of each gas contains the same number of particles, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So from this table, we can see that equal volumes of any gas at the same temperature and pressure have the same number of particles which is Avogadro's law. So next, we look at some example problems. In the first example, we'll look at the reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. According to the balanced equation, two moles of carbon monoxide react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of carbon dioxide. If the reaction is carried out at a fixed temperature and pressure, we can treat the mole ratios as volume ratios. So we can say that two volumes of carbon monoxide will react with one volume of oxygen to produce two volumes of carbon dioxide. So two cubic decimeters of carbon monoxide will react with one cubic decimeter of oxygen to produce two cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide. And 10 cubic decimeters of carbon monoxide will react with five cubic decimeters of oxygen to produce 10 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide. So to summarize, if a reaction is carried out at a fixed temperature and pressure, we can treat the mole ratios as volume ratios. So next, we look at some examples. In our first example, 40 cubic decimeters of carbon monoxide is reacted with 40 cubic decimeters of oxygen at STP. Determine the volume of carbon dioxide produced. So the first step is to determine the limiting reactant. To do this, we can divide the volume of each reactant by its coefficient in the balanced equation. So for carbon monoxide, that's 40 divided by 2, which gives us 20. And for oxygen, it's 40 divided by 1, which gives us 40. The lowest value, which is carbon monoxide, is the limiting reactant, and oxygen is the excess reactant. If we look at the coefficients in the balanced equation, we can see that 2 moles of carbon monoxide will produce 2 moles of carbon dioxide. So 40 cubic decimeters of carbon monoxide will produce the same volume, which is 40 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide. In our next example, we have 20 cubic decimeters of nitrogen reacting with 50 cubic decimeters of hydrogen at STP. Determine the volume of ammonia produced and the volume of the excess reactant remaining. So in this reaction, which is known as the Harper process, nitrogen and hydrogen react together to form ammonia. Like in the previous example, the first step is to determine the limiting reactant. So for nitrogen, we divide the volume by the coefficient in the balanced equation, which gives us 20. If we do the same for hydrogen, we get 16.7, which tells us that hydrogen is the limiting reactant. If we look at the molar ratio of hydrogen to ammonia, we can see it's a 3 to 2 ratio. This means that 50 cubic decimeters of hydrogen will produce two-thirds as much ammonia, which is 33.3 .3 cubic decimeters. Next, we'll calculate the volume of the excess reactant remaining. To do this, we look at the molar ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen, which we can see is a 1 to 3 ratio. This tells us that 50 cubic decimeters of hydrogen will react with a third as much nitrogen, which is 16.7 cubic decimeters. So to calculate the volume of nitrogen remaining, we subtract 16.7 from 20, which gives us 3.3 cubic decimeters. 